Exposure Therapy, Wikipedia Audio Exposure therapy is a technique in behavior therapy thought to help treat anxiety disorders. Exposure therapy involves exposing the target patient to the anxiety source or its context without the intention to cause any danger. Doing so is thought to help them overcome their anxiety or distress. Procedurally it is similar to the fear extinction paradigm developed studying laboratory rodents. Numerous studies have demonstrated its effectiveness in the treatment of disorders such as generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, obsessive-compulsive disorder PTSD, and specific phobias. The use of exposure as a mode of therapy began in the 1950s, at a time when psychodynamic views dominated Western clinical practice and behavioral therapy was first emerging. South African psychologists and psychiatrists first used exposure as a way to reduce pathological fears, such as phobias and anxiety-related problems, and they brought their methods to England in the Maudsley Hospital Training Program. Background Joseph Walp was one of the first psychiatrists to spark interest in treating psychiatric problems as behavioral issues. He sought consultation with other behavioral psychologists, among them James G. Taylor, who worked in the psychology department of the University of Cape Town in South Africa. Although most of his work went unpublished, Taylor was the first psychologist known to use exposure therapy treatment for anxiety, including methods of situational exposure with response prevention a common exposure therapy technique still being used. Since the 1950s several sorts of exposure therapy have been developed, including systematic desensitization, flooding, implosive therapy, prolonged exposure therapy, in vivo exposure therapy, and imaginal exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is based on the principle of respondent conditioning often termed Pavlovian extinction. The exposure therapist identifies the cognitions, emotions, and physiological arousal that accompany a fear-inducing stimulus and then tries to break the pattern of escape that maintains the fear. This is done by exposing the patient to progressively stronger fear-inducing stimuli. Fear is minimized at each of a series of steadily escalating steps or challenges, which can be explicit or implicit until the fear is finally gone. The patient is able to terminate the procedure at any time. There are three types of exposure procedures. The first is in vivo or real life. This type exposes the patient to actual fear-inducing situations. For example, if someone fears public speaking, the person may be asked to give a speech to a small group of people. The second type of exposure is imaginal, where patients are asked to imagine a situation that they are afraid of. This procedure is helpful for people who need to confront feared thoughts and memories. The third type of exposure is interoceptive, which may be used for more specific disorders such as panic or post-traumatic stress disorder. Patients confront feared bodily symptoms such as increased heart rate and shortness of breath. All types of exposure may be used together or separately. While evidence clearly supports the effectiveness of exposure therapy, some clinicians are uncomfortable using imaginal exposure therapy, especially in cases of PTSD. They may not understand it, are not confident in their own ability to use it, or more commonly, they see significant contraindications for their client. Flooding therapy also exposes the patient to feared stimuli but it is quite distinct in that flooding starts at the most feared item in a fear hierarchy, while exposure starts at the least fear-inducing. In the Exposure and Response Prevention Variation of Exposure Therapy, 
the resolution to refrain from the escape response is to be maintained at all times and not just during specific practice sessions. Thus, not only does the subject experience habituation to the feared stimulus, they also practice a fear-incompatible behavioral response to the stimulus. While this type of therapy typically causes some short-term anxiety, this facilitates long-term reduction in obsessive and compulsive symptoms. 103. There is empirical evidence that exposure therapy can be an effective treatment for people with generalized anxiety disorder, citing specifically in vivo exposure therapy, which has greater effectiveness than imaginal exposure in regards to generalized anxiety disorder. The aim of in vivo exposure treatment is to promote emotional regulation using systematic and controlled therapeutic exposure to traumatic stimuli. Exposure therapy is the most successful known treatment for phobias. Several published meta-analyses included studies of 1-3 to three hour single session treatments of phobias, using imaginal exposure. At a post-treatment follow-up four years later 90% of patients retained a considerable reduction in fear, avoidance, and overall level of impairment, while 65% no longer experienced any symptoms of a specific phobia. Agoraphobia and social anxiety disorder are examples of phobias that have been successfully treated by exposure therapy. Agoraphobia is a fear of being in situations where escape might be difficult or that help wouldn't be available if things go wrong, originating from the ancient Greek term agora or marketplace, while social anxiety disorder is an anxiety disorder characterized by a significant amount of fear in one or more social situations. Such fears can be very debilitating in themselves and in addition patients often worry about showing anxiety and losing control in public. Techniques Virtual reality exposure therapy is a modern but effective treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. This method was tested on several active duty army soldiers, using an immersive computer simulation of military settings over six sessions. Self-reported PTSD symptoms of these soldiers were greatly diminished following the treatment. Exposure therapy has shown promise in the treatment of comorbid PTSD and substance abuse. Exposure and response prevention is a variant of exposure therapy that is recommended by the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, the American Psychiatric Association and the Mayo Clinic as first-line treatment of obsessive-compulsive disorder citing that it has the richest empirical support for both youth and adolescent outcomes. ERP is predicated on the idea that a therapeutic effect is achieved as subjects confront their fears, but refrain from engaging in the escape response or ritual that delays or eliminates distress. In the case of individuals with OCD or an anxiety disorder, there is a thought or situation that causes distress. Individuals usually combat this distress through specific behaviors that include avoidance or rituals. However, ERP involves purposefully evoking fear, anxiety, and or distress in the individual by exposing him slash her to the feared stimulus. The response prevention then involves having the individual refrain from the ritualistic or otherwise compulsive behavior that functions to decrease distress. The patient is then taught to tolerate distress until it fades away on its own, thereby learning that rituals are not always necessary to decrease distress or anxiety. Over repeated practice of ERP Patients with OCD expect to find that they can have obsessive thoughts and images but not have the need to engage in compulsive rituals to decrease distress. The EDISAPS practice parameters for OCD recommends cognitive behavioral therapy, and more specifically ERP, 
as first-line treatment for youth with mild to moderate severity OCD in combination psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy for severe OCD. The Cochrane Review's examinations of different randomized control trials echoes repeated findings of the superiority of ERP over waitlist control or pill placebos, the superiority of combination ERP and pharmacotherapy, but similar effect sizes of efficacy between ERP or pharmacotherapy alone. A 2015 review pointed out parallels between exposure therapy and mindfulness, stating that mindful meditation resembles an exposure situation because practitioners turn towards their emotional experience, bring acceptance to bodily and affective responses, and refrain from engaging in internal reactivity towards it. Imaging studies have shown that the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, hippocampus, and the amygdala are all affected by exposure therapy. Imaging studies have shown similar activity in these regions with mindfulness training. There are a number of organizations of behavior therapists around the world. The Association for Behavior Analysis International offers a certification in behavior therapy to therapists who demonstrate competence in exposure therapy. Exposure therapy can be investigated in the laboratory using Pavlovian extinction paradigms. Using rodents such as rats or mice to study extinction allows for the investigation of underlying neurobiological mechanisms involved as well as testing of pharmacological adjuncts to improve extinction learning. Applications Generalized anxiety disorder Phobias Post-traumatic stress disorder Obsessive-compulsive disorder Mindfulness Organizations and certification Research